Hi guys, uh, back again with a nice little video. Um, interesting topic about CopyCube and using the editor, as you might know, um, you are limited for how much stuff you can save before it starts crashing, usually typically around 400 megabytes, uh, 500 maybe, 600 if you're lucky. Now, easy way around that is just load the higher textures that you want in the game as it, as it uh, loads up rather than in the editor because it seems to be an editor problem it's not a game problem so I've, I've got that working um, I'll just show you that now um, I've got three levels of LODs if you like uh, level of detail um, I'm not dynamically switching in between them according to distance because this CopyCube uses MIP maps that already do that, so you don't need to do that. Just load the highest texture you can get in the system that runs nice, and uh, and just just stick with that. The MIP maps will take care of the rest. Um, now, so what I've got uh, is uh, in a, yeah, I've just got a setting set up so you can select what level you want, low, medium, and high. So three levels. Um, yeah, I'll show you that um, now. As you can see, the doors, those textures are pretty low. I mean, most of it's, this is on the low setting at the moment. So in other words, I stick everything in the game as much as possible on the low on low quality textures and then on load, I'll get it to uh, load up whatever setting you've selected uh, in the settings for texture settings. Uh, I've just added a couple of things in here. Um, notice how those uh, drawers are pretty low resolution. It looks pretty crappy, doesn't it? So this is the lowest setting. Normally I wouldn't have it on this setting. The minimum setting I'd probably put is one level above. So I've just got it by number, pressing the number. So I go to press number one, it'll load the next level up. Um, all right, so that's that's way better. Now the the gun just happens to be linked to that same number for now. Don't worry about that. Um, so put the gun away. So it only loads the new textures if it's different to the existing setting. I've got it. So as you can see, that's that's a lot better. I've also got uh, made some changes. Um, to the menus and all the rest of it. Um, I had to put this, uh, instead of leaving things open when it's been searched like I wanted to do before, um, that didn't work out so good because when you open drawers and you leave it open, you can't actually access the drawer below it, so that's, that's no good. So come back to the traditional method of having a little um, information box to come up, tell you what, so it's searched or check or empty. So I'll empty that one. Now it's empty. All right, so that's okay. Yeah, so that sort of thing. I've got a nice uh, a uh, fizz machine here. Soda. I wish I had one. UC card required. That's universal credits. Here we go. What about that? You need, just for testing only. This is not finished, but it, it's just basically working. Uh, you need two of those to get it to work. Um, so I've got two at the moment. Um, so that's 20 credits effectively. Now I can select any of those. I'll get down the bottom. It's a random one, this one. So you can get something different that way. There you go. Popped out. Um, yeah, so... Uh, I don't, don't have that yet. Yeah, so I don't have that yet. Um, <laughs> yeah, so that works alright. Um, yeah, as you can see, it's not bad. Works alright. Um, this is level one textures. This is not the highest texture level. That looks still looks a bit, a bit crappy, doesn't it? So I'll go to level number two now, highest level. Press number two. It takes a while to load. It's loading now. Um, there you go. Finished. Took a while there, but uh, got there. So I'll just press two again to get rid of the gun. So as you can see, the, the bin is just looking all right now. That's okay. And all the other textures have improved. Um, that was the same because that was already like high high level on the previous setting anyway but the rest of it's all improved uh, so two I'll press one see that goes down and then zero just see here yeah, back to one two and once it's loaded in memory it refreshes quick but, but it does take a while to load into memory um, the high textures you know lots of quite a few megabytes um, so that's two that's one that's zero so you can see the difference quite a difference in that uh, resolution Oops! <laughs> Get rid of that. Um, 
Yeah, so just just starting to put a couple of things in here. Oh, got a different sound there. I didn't even, didn't even remember changing that sound, but anyway, that's all right. Um, got some lockers. Yeah, got a bin. Oh, I did have a bin. There we are. Got a bin. Got some garbage in there. Oh, we've got a gun. Well, it's a bit heavy, the gun, so I'll put it away for now. I don't need it right now. Um, yeah, so that's working. So, that's all good. So you can see the textures on the doors. That's highest. That's zero. That's one. And two. So, yeah, at the highest resolution. That would be the one you want. Uh, you can see the frame, frames per second. It's running fine at 62 frames a second. No problem. Um, some of these uh, textures are not so great, just the way it came, the actual design. See, that's low, medium, high. The high looks just okay. Um, some of the textures, like this this bin thing here, this, I'm going to get rid of this because it's just not good enough. Even on the highest textures, it looks a little bit grotty. At zero, that's terrible. One, that's terrible as well. So it's only barely, barely good enough on the highest setting. On the previous one, it's just not good enough. It's a weird looking thing anyway, I don't know what it's supposed to be. Um, I suppose I could try and repair it and do my own textures. I could do that. But anyway, um, so yeah, there's the doors. So that's zero, one, two. So two, the highest setting does look, it's all right. It's not too bad. And, uh, and yeah, it runs at decent speed, still fine. So that's all right. Um, yeah, so. Yeah, so that's good. So that's all you want to do is load high textures. Up. I'm going to create a menu and just update that. It's already just wanted to test it using the, the number buttons first. Um, yeah, so that's good. That's all you got to do. You can get around that and then you can add heaps more textures in. Um, the megabytes, I used to check the megabytes, used to load up an additional 300 megabytes on um, before I did this texture. Um, selection thing and now it goes up like another gigabyte it's uh, can load a ton more stuff um, that doesn't work properly oh yes it does okay okay does work all right um, some barrels they're okay basic that's zero it's one so it's really only the highest setting it looks any good um, yeah uh, otherwise not so great but that's all right. You can just run at the highest setting. If I can run this fine on my computer, most computers will be fine with it. I've got a mid mid level computer, pretty decent, really, pretty high specs. Four gigahertz, eight gigabyte RAM. Um, that's zero, one, second level. So that looks, you know, decent, doesn't it? Looks good. Um, yeah. So um, that's what you want to do. Um, I'll also add that um, filtering, the three different filtering methods posted on the forum just recently by one of the, the, the forum members is a good idea. I'll put that in the settings as well. You can change that as well. I used to go with trilinear because it's much better than bilinear. Um, but anastrophic is also another level better again. I haven't tested that out fully whether it will slow the computer down. That may. It may slow it down a little bit. Um, but I haven't fully tested that. It's good to have. Um, yeah, so. Yeah, I'm just starting to get the office working. Um, yeah, so it seems to be all working all right. For the most part, it's getting there. There's a few bugs here and there, but um, we'll get there. Um, yeah, so here's the bin. Not a very good sound, I'll fix it up one, one day. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Don't have that yet. Yeah, I don't have that yet. Um, so, yeah. Drawers. Drawers are pretty cool. Yeah. So, I've just put, put a, quite a few lot of extra little stuff in there temporarily just to test it out. Not fussed with 
being perfect or anything at the moment, just to get it working. Um, yeah, so it does work. Um, I'll show you the code. Um, one back in one second. Okay, back. Uh, so this is my game. Um, I've all got little um, different folders for different things, but everything inside the ship is under this folder called ship. Well, it's not a folder, it's actually a mesh. It's a 3D mesh. And I, you can put stuff in a 3D mesh, which is fine, but I would highly recommend you always scale everything to 111, no matter what you do, whatever you got, always just constantly free scale, uh, normalize normal. It's back to 111 um, once you've got it to the size you want. Um, because it can stuff a lot of things up when you, if you've got loading different levels in different sections and you've got different sizes, the code will work in one level and not properly in the other and all this sort of stuff uh, because the, the size uh, does affect, uh, you know, distances and all that sort of stuff as well. Um, so basically, I want to update all the textures. How I did it was, firstly, this ship has a ton of textures uh, and some of them are normalised, some of them are not. Um, now, that was a bit tricky how to work out how to update it I didn't really want to do a texture count for every single, you know, every single texture. Um, you know, I could, but it slows it slows this the update down quite a bit. So basically, what I've got is a ship. I've got all the folders, and within each folder, there's a ton of stuff. And I've tried to just have one level, but there is two levels often. Uh, so under that folder, there's the, all the items, and uh, and then occasionally. Occasionally, there's a, there's a child node there. See, so occasionally you have child nodes under each item. So that's the that's that's the three main le uh, three main levels. Uh, apart from the ship, is the the folder under the, the main, and then the item and a ch one child item. So this is a child underneath that switch. Um, so basically, to code it was a little bit tricky, but if you break it down carefully, um, it's not too bad. It's one of the most complicated for loops I've ever done, but um, because it's a for loop in a for loop within a for loop, yeah. Um, now that's that's just the ship mesh to check the ship by itself. That's I call that the top level. So that just for loops over the um, the net, the material count. There's a material count of just just the ship by itself. That's that's a separate issue. Now the main thing here is. Uh, all the items under each folder under the ship. So this is the, the main one. This this is the one part there, and the other part sort of in two parts, if you like. So basically, the top the top is the ship. If you had it a folder, if it was a folder name, then you just use put the folder name there. And if you had lots of folders under that that single folder, then you, you yeah. So top that's the top. So get see no child count. Get all the child counts. So in other words, get all the folders. That's that's one level below it. Do a for loop over that, and then under, under each folder, uh, see that folders is what is each child under the top. Now for each, there's the folders there. So now I want to find individual folder, so you get child seed node from the top, so the one level up, and whatever letter you're using for this for loop. <coughs> so you're for looping over that to start with. So it's a top down, it's not bottom up. Um, I don't think you can even do bottom up you have to do top down um, so and then under the each folder you've got different items so there's items see no child count under each folder full up over that um, <clears throat> down under um, so then I need to get the child node um, for each item so I can then check how many material slots for each item under under each folder so this is this this one here child node under the folder and then slots so this is the texture slots material count uh, of the item uh, okay so and then I need to for loop over the number of materials under that item under the folder under the top does that make sense so so there's three for loops there um, and actually I've got another uh, yeah Yeah, I've got um, I've got another couple of full loops there as well. Anyway, let's go. Let's continue here. Um, so this this is looking at each item. So it's just got the items, all the textures under each item. It's not looking at the any children under the items at the moment. So so it's doing a material count for each item, and then it full loops over that and 
get C node. So I want, I want the location. How I've done this to, to determine what textures to update, I haven't, I haven't automatically updated every single texture. I only select ones that I want to update. Some of them are fine the way they are and they don't need to update. Um, and others I, I do want to update. So I've separate, segregated the two intersections by getting the location. Now the location depends uh, uh, so depending where it's located, the texture that it came from, which which is this here, so I fall up over the, each material. Under every single material, under each item, it tells me the C node property uh, of the texture one of of that item, and it tells. So in other words, it tells me the location. It says you know like a C drive, blah blah blah, program files, it gives me the location of it. But I don't need the whole location. I just want a certain selection of it, and I just need that word data because that's where my this is where my um, textures all located under data, just right there. Text textures, oops, not that. Under here, so this is where all the textures get updated. So I've got three levels. For every one, I've got zero, one, and two uh, for the diffuse and normals as well. So, so that's uh, <clears throat> D for diffuse there, N for normals there. So, <clears throat> so they're all the same length. So it works that way works out okay so it's looking for that word data if you if you put in the forward slash which is part of the location it won't work for some reason you can only you have you can't put that in it so you get rid of that and just put some keywords in it and, and it's saying so in other words it's saying if I've if it's if it's the name of the texture is located in that certain section that I've kept the the LEDs for then update it otherwise don't update it so <clears throat> so it's doing a substring it's picking out a certain length of the, the code and then it's putting, uh, loading it from that same spectrum, uh, section, textures, folder, the name, this has to be a specific length, exact name, then D for diffuse and N for normal for each texture. So, so in other words, every single texture I'm updating in here has to have uh, diffuse and normal, um, every single one of them for it to work properly, which it does that. So that updates that. And then the child, occasional child node under each item, not every item, but some items, um, it just does a check under for each item to see if there's any child nodes. So and it could have more than one. Um, but really, I'm only updating the first child node. Uh, yeah, only the first child because I, I don't have any textures that have more than one child node. <clears throat> Apart from you know using sounds and other things, I don't need to worry about. Okay, so it gets that. Um, it gets the child node in that case if there is more than um, more than one. Uh, so in other words, if it's uh, children is more than zero, it'll it'll run this check. Um, child count. Um, then it has to check how many texture slots because some child nodes do have more than one texture. So it's some it's a double. So in other words, this is like three, five, four loops. It's pretty crazy. That's why it takes so long. But still, it's, it's worth it. I could have done a, you know a manual big array of data of showing what what uh, what's the name of the nodes to update only if I wanted to and you know what slots and and all the rest of it that would take ages and it's always changing I don't like doing that because those sort of things change all the time and you're always constantly fixing bugs and problems that don't ma mismatches and stuff so I just do it this way this is more thorough and checks everything this way yeah so then um, same thing looks for the word data if it finds it then updates it boom just like before then it updates the LOD. So in other words, it only runs this if my LOD, current LOD is not equal to the LOD you've selected, in other words. Um, yeah, and then that's it. Yeah, so that's how I've done it, and it works fine. Um, it's a little bit uh, long-winded. Five, four loops. How would you like that? Yeah, but it's not too bad if you break it down in sections. Um, yeah, and try not to put too many sub menus uh you know folders items within a folder within a folder within a folder that sort of thing try and keep that to a minimal if you can i like to have at least just one folder under the main one that's why i'm going to settle on doing it and occasionally occasionally an item will have a child node as well so i can't get around that it's that's the way i have to do it because the way i've set up the uh, door switches and everything see the interactable item is the door switch this little thing here the door itself is is a child node that moves with it so has to be done that way. Um, can't be done any way, any other way. So, anyway, so it does work. Works fine. Um, yeah. So that's how you can do it. Uh, yeah. Hope you like that.
Tschüss.